mm, the money. We need to know about that. What is? And I'm like, well, it's a private checking account. Yeah, we put money out of our business account into there, and, and they're just, oh, we've got to ask this. It's it's just the federal requirement. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's Big Brother. And they're like, no, we're not spying on you, sir. No, no, no. We're familiar with your radio show. We 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 know what you talk about, but that isn't. We're not spying. See, they're not spying when they are asking you questions and filling out reports on you. No, no. Guilty until proven innocent. No Fourth Amendment. No, 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 no. You know, the news 10 years ago when they put this through, they called it Big Brother, total takeover, Soviet-style control. But now it's not. Kind of like the TSA says, listen, we're going to go in your pants. But it's not groping. Like the strip searching all the old ladies. They said, we don't strip search. We call it a search. We just call it a security check. We're not strip searching. Yes, we take your clothes off, but it's not a strip search. And and we're going to fill out a suspicious crime report on you, but it's not spying. And you know what? The government's going to put fluoride in the water that gives you a sevenfold increase in bone cancer on record. But it's not poison. And it's not forced medicating. And we're going to raid Amish. Now every day I'm getting reports with SWAT teams for selling milk to their neighbors, which isn't even illegal. But that's not a police state. And you know what? The government's going to ship guns into Mexico and cocaine back in and get caught and not get in trouble. But that's not dangerous. And the FBI is going to threaten to kill cops. But that's okay. Well, let me expand on this. All over the United States. The hairs on your arm. We'll stand but up. in Texas, we've gotten really famous That's for this on national news because they love to always make local police look bad. So the feds, who are even worse on average, can come in and take over uh, with their federal takeovers of your towns and cities. But they'll show police chiefs and, and judges going, that's right. If we pull you over and you have even $500 in your wallet or purse, we're taking it as contraband. Under asset forfeiture seizure, no drugs or crimes needed. That's what the regs say. And they just, Anderson Cooper puts it on news, Mr. CIA, who tells you how great it is that our troops grow the opium in Afghanistan. And I, not, and I by no means am de defending the local police. And I, again, I've been pulled over in some of these small towns in East Texas and places where the cops have giant swastikas on their arms. I mean, you're like, what on earth is going on here? Uh, but the issue is, yes, I, as I told you last week, I was pulled over once as a teenager with a guy with a swastika on his forearm and a swastika on his arm, on the side of his arm. He was wearing short sleeves. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine being a minority pulled over by that guy? The point is, it's wild open season. But even the state police before, there was a famous case where an old woman had like $3,000 in her purse, and they just took it. What's this in your purse? Well, when I travel, Sonny, I carry enough money to fix my car, do whatever. I'm going to visit family in Kansas. And they said, no, you're not. We're taking the money. <laughs> and so you, you go to your bank account. I mean, what if I would have wanted all the money out of my bank account? You know, they never have a question, though, when you're depositing it, though. But you want some of it out. And all of this is about teaching you that you're a criminal. All of this is about teaching you to be spied on. And I try to explain it to these to the bank manager I was talking to this morning as I was haranguing the poor person. And he was saying, well, I'm just doing my job. Don't be paranoid. We're not spying on you. Oh, you're not spying on me. No, you just fill out financial crimes enforcement reports on me. Well, you know, don't, don't be afraid, sir. I'm not afraid of that. I'm afraid of what it means that you accept this like it's no big deal and the rest of society does. Well, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, I heard that before. And I'm like, don't you understand Corzine is allowed to run off with billions? Yeah, I know about that. Don't you, did you hear about Wachovia and Wells Fargo laundering hundreds of billions? Yeah, I heard about that. Oh, but, but a guy wanting to, you know, thousands of dollars out of the bank, that's, that's evil. And again, I understand that's just a minion at a bank. I get it. But when you walk up to any, under Patriot Act compliance, any hotel, any rental car, any place, period now, you see the people on the power trip in their little suits, and they start asking, where are you going? 
oh, I'm here to visit my cousin, or I'm here for business. Oh, what business is that? And they're a script. And I go, hey, I understand this is Patriot Act, and they tell you you're a little secret agent now, and you have little seminars. They're like, oh, really, you do? You know, one woman's sort of going, uh -huh, you're right, and I know where you really live. This isn't really your address on your driver's license, is it? No, I moved. That's right, you live here. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, you're on a power trip. And I go, the mega banks you love so much are going to suck you dry. You like the fact you're not doing as well as you were doing just five years ago because we're really a depression? You're going to be destroyed by the little petty system you like. Now, sir, I'm just trying to do my job. Yeah, you are just doing your job, aren't you? Just like that state police guy pulls me over, starts wanting to search my car, and I'm like, I don't run narcotics like your criminal bosses do. I'm not involved like the state government here working with DynCor kidnapping kids or the state youth commission with the big rape rooms that came out with the judges and all the rest of them in there with the kids. I'm not involved in all that. And I looked at him and I said, this system's going to destroy you. And at the end he goes, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, Alex, I'll listen to the show. Well, then what have you been doing trying to ask me 20 questions and wanting to search my car for the last 15 minutes, buddy? This isn't a game. It isn't a joke. I'm so freaked out. It freaks me out to talk to cops off air over the years and then have them actually come on air now. And go, yeah, most of the department knows the feds did it. And we're finally getting the courage to go public. And, uh, and the FBI threatened to kill me and my wife. And you're just like, I, I mean, it, it, it's so real. Listen, cop. You know, they tell him, shut up about us in Oklahoma City or you and your wife are dead. And then they actually killed Oklahoma City cops. No one will stand up to these people. And so there's no end to what they're going to do to us. When we come back, they're announcing nationwide checkpoints where they're going to grope your wife in front of you. We're on the mo Okay, so I'm ranting here. The point is, you go to the YMCA, you go to Best Buy, you go to the bank, you go to the airport, you drive down the highway, you go anywhere, there's all these petty people who are told through their corporate models, because remember, the mega corporations are owned by the big six banks on record. So are the big defense contractor companies. The whole military industrial complex Eisenhower warned us about. And the classical tyranny of Soviet Russia, Nazi Germany, all of it is exactly what they're setting up today. There's no debating it. I mean, it is the bona fide deal. Like a 57 Chevy, you know what it looks like? Well, the, the, we know what tyranny looks like. You know what a duck looks like? It's, it's yellow. It's got a beak. It's got a little web feet. Swims around. Looks like a duck. Walks like a duck. Quacks like a duck. Gets in the river. It's in the pond. It's a duck. You, you, I mean, you know what a pit bull looks like. You know what Hitler looks like. I mean, you know what a Saturn V rocket looks like. I mean, there it is. Let's stop playing games. And... What the cowards do is they just burrow more into it. They just give into it even more. And then they act like those of us that are sane that we got the problem. And so I want to explain something to the bank tellers. I want to explain something to the gun shop dealers and everybody else. Everybody wants to mislabel things so you think it's okay. I remember 16 years ago having a couple gun shops that had good guns and good prices on as sponsors when I was just on local radio and they were making money hand over fist. And that's great. Cause I believe in, you know, making money in the free market and getting implements of Liberty out there to the public. And I would get experts on there and talk about how judge, um, you know, judges at the Supreme court had ruled that Sheriff Richard Mack was right. 10th amendment violation Brady bill violated states' rights, uh, and a bunch of other issues that you couldn't have a five-day waiting period. And that ruling had come down to the Supreme Court, and we were having Sheriff Richard Mack on. And the, both the sponsors called after I had him on a few times and said, stop saying we register guns now that we've gone to the next instant check. It's cutting back on sales, plus it's not a registration. And I said to the sponsors, I said, I, I said, this is a registration. Your name and you're buying a handgun, rifle, or shotgun. And then they know that, that it's on file, the serial number right there. But basically how many guns you've got and your address under penalty of perjury, that is registration as a gun owner, period. 
And I said, I'm sorry. I, I, I cannot shut up about this. And one of the sponsors left. And then later got so harassed by the government anyways, like other gun dealers, they went into a vitamin business and, and did quite well. But the point is, and the other one didn't like it but understood. But then I got calls from other gun dealers saying, don't do this, it's hurting business. Hey, you're going to lose the whole business and you're going to lose the Second Amendment. That's a lot more important than your stinking business, pal. If we don't tell the truth, I am not going to shut up for a sponsor. I'm not going to shut up for anybody. I'm willing to die for the truth. You think I'm going to sell out for some money? But see, you sell out by lying to yourselves. Oh, we don't really register people. I've been in gun shops before uh, and uh, said, okay, let's get this registration process over with, flick out my driver's license. They're like, sir, it's not a registration. I'm like, feed that line of bull to somebody else. Now I'm going to preach at you. I bet you support George Bush, don't you? He supports the assault weapons ban. This was a few years ago uh, in McBride's. I was there buying that shotgun to re recreate the Cheney shooting to prove that he shot the guy closer than what he'd said. And the guy's like, ah, if I don't like you saying that Bush uh, supports that. I've heard you. That's not true. And the owner comes over and goes, that's actually true. And the guy's like, huh? But, but the point is, is that it's a lie. It is a registration. But that's a side issue. The central point I'm getting at here, before I go to the top stories in your calls, is that they don't, the, the ATF six months ago, and we got this first from a local gun dealer before it was even in the news, we broke it. The ATF was sending letters and agents, if needed, to local gun shops to say, you are going to report more than one rifle sale to us in writing and with a phone call, or we'll arrest you and take your license and or both. And, of course, that was outside of law. They just tried to pass a law to do that. They couldn't pass it, so they just said, we'll just do it. We're a criminal enterprise. We'll do it. We're folks that ship drugs into the country and guns out of the country and guns to gangs around the country. That's all come out in Fast and Furious. The mainstream media only covers the upper crust, the upper part of the tip of the iceberg, one snowflake on top. And actually, mainstream media has covered the drug dealing, but it's Chicago Tribune, El Paso Times, now New York Times. I guess I, I, I guess they have kind of covered it lately. But it's like, well, they just launder the money and run the drugs to keep track of everything. Of course, you understand the five hundred billion. They they just they just they, you know these agents just live in three million dollar houses for no reason. I remember being in high school and going over and visiting my buddy whose dad was an FBI agent's house. It was like you know fanciest area of Austin. Uh, all these rich people saw some famous people there, and I'm like, what is this? Is your, you, is your dad independently wealthy? They're like, why are you asking those questions? The point is, this is how America runs. And if somebody gets in the way of it, like a cop in Oklahoma City, hey, why are there bombs here? You guys, uh, we know where your daughter goes to school. We'll, we'll, we'll kill your daughter. Another cop by the water cooler, FBI walks over. Um, we're going to kill you and your wife if you keep asking questions. We're the FBI. And everybody's afraid of them. And everybody bows down to them. That's like when the FBI showed up here one time, digging around. I couldn't help it. I mean, I was like a dog in a backyard that sees, you know, a a, 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 a prowler. I couldn't help it. I, I, I puffed up and walked out. I said, what are you doing here? You work for terrorists. I'm good. And, and they just don't know how to deal with that. They, they don't know how to deal with it. I have broken the trance. I know what I'm talking about. I am not putting up with it anymore. And I know most FBI agents are investigating, you know, missing people and bank robberies. I know most of you aren't criminals. But most German soldiers weren't killing people either in death camps. I mean, you, you, most Soviets weren't bad people individually, but they followed orders that led to a greater evil. I, I'm really having... I'm going to be honest with you. It's not even shaken up. It is stone cold awake, which in a land of Looney Tune people that put up with tyranny, I guess I am stone cold crazy because last night I could barely eat dinner. I got home about 730. My wife had made me this incredible dinner, made the children wait. I sat down, started eating, and she made me this steak with mushrooms all over it, all this stuff. And I could, couldn't even eat it, even though it tasted great, because I was so freaked out by that incredibly 